Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make a prop from the new Disney show, Loki. I'm going to make a time baton, or time stick. It's the time manipulation billy club that the Minutemen carry. So this is a prop that may not have a whole lot of foam in it. I hope that's okay with all of you. So I want to make the time baton. I've also called it the time stick. It just seems to be the stun stick, the time manipulation device that the Minutemen are using uh, as they go out and do their reconnaissance field trips that they need to do for the TVA. Uh, if you really look closely at the props, both on screen as well as in the production photos, what it really, really looks like is that the base is a good old school type of heavy duty flashlight. And it happens to work out that the barrel of this is pretty close to the size of a, uh, what is this, one inch or three quarter inch? One inch PVC pipe. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna have the flashlight base, I'm gonna have a PVC pipe for the actual stick, and then I'm gonna 3D print connectors that go between the pipe and the flashlight and then all the decorations that go on the end. And I hope that uh, my pieces that I make will be strong enough to be able to hold up to all that. So we'll find out. Um, I guess first, I need to make some 3D parts. First thing I did was load up Blender. It's a very powerful 3D program. You delete the starting block, like always. Then I gotta change the mode to allow for object creation. That's, uh, that's up here. Oh yeah, also I need to adjust the size of the grid because it starts in meters. I want centimeters because I'm not building something the size of a house. Now I can just add a mesh. What I want is a cylinder. Next I go to the edit mode because I plan on making the PVC pipe first. I know the size that I want and it can help with understanding the size of the other parts that I need to make. I just need to find how I see the size of the cylinder because that was buried like in an odd place, kind of hidden. You know, it, it took a moment, but then I remembered exactly what it was that I needed to do when I wanted to work with Blender. Tinkercad is a free to use browser based 3D program. And in a short amount of time, I was working on my second variation of the parts. Bringing in basic shapes, easily adjusting the size by clicking the white control nodes and then typing in an exact number of what I want in millimeters easily grouping objects together to make a more complex shape. And I can even make a shape into a hole, which then removes that whole shape from the grouped object. I made panel lines by creating the shape that I wanted, duplicating the main object, reducing the size a little, turning that into a hole, positioning my new cutout, changing the cutout into a hole, and then grouping it with the part I want. Panel lines. Okay, it's still kind of complicated. Tinkercad has a learning curve as well, but it's nowhere near the amount of frustration <laughs> and pain, or uh, maybe I should say it has nowhere near the features that Blender does. But I can export a shape and save it to my computer. And then bring it into a slicer program to prepare the files that I created to be printed on my 3D printer. And a couple of hours later, I have the part I made using a free browser-based CAD program. I even printed some of my earlier versions, even though I didn't really need them. Since I really liked model kits as a kid, and honestly I still do, I made this one a lot like a model kit with parts that fit together. And I printed the inner part from a translucent resin so it can glow with a flashlight. And then I ran into an issue that I didn't really know that I would have. The parts didn't fit correctly. This piece is overall just too small. Um, I was kind of thinking that might happen when I was doing it in the computer. I was looking at it going, well, mathematically this should work, but. I think overall this is a little too small, so I can increase this. Not that hard. What do you want to call it? There's there's elements of printing that are getting it to where the, the near zero tolerances that I built into it aren't working. There's a huge shock. Again, not a big deal. I can get around that. But for proof of concept, I think this is going to be just fine. I mean, this will be painted, there'll be PVC pipe in the way. That's pretty much getting me what I want. So I'm gonna need to redesign most of the parts. <laughs> oh, I should see if it works with PVC pipe. It is so close to fitting, but just doesn't. All right, what if... Uh... The other end has a bevel sanded into it. The part still doesn't go all the way onto the pipe. 
This looks like it could be bigger. Oh, that's looking fine. That's looking. It also really reminds me of the top of a thumper from the 1984 David Lynch version of Dune. But, um, all right. Overall, I'm okay with this. If I had to go to a con tomorrow, I could force this to work and I'd be fine, but I don't. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna remake a few parts and I'm gonna reset the printer and get printing again and see if I can't get parts that just work the way they should because that's always the goal, right? So let's do that. While the second round was printing, I checked out the flashlight. No, I'm really sure that they are flashlights that they use in the show. There's a, a character poster of one of the main Minutemen, and if you look at the top of their um, time baton hanging off of their belt, it's got the red button. It's, it, it's the red button that I've seen on so many flashlights. So I'm pretty sure it's just a flashlight base, so I have no problem using this and not completely 3D printing everything. But something I noticed with this, the the end where the light goes, it was threaded, which I thought was awesome. I could take it off. But as I did that, the wires that were inside totally got shredded. But that's kind of okay. I'm excited that I found wires inside the flashlight. That's gonna make it easier to solder a connection down a length of PVC because I want the, the LEDs as close to the 3D printed part as I can get. But now I need to, I probably should take the batteries out. Oh, they are out, good. Um, now what I need to do is see if I can't get into the rest of this to get the LEDs out because this piece is too big for every piece of the baton. <laughs> good. There it is. Okay. Okay, okay. Awesome lens, refractor, everything else. The LEDs are freaking huge. Well, not the LEDs, but the circuit board that they're mounted to. You see, it's wider than any part of the time baton. Okay, so I'm concerned about the size of the circuit board because this is larger than any piece I want to use on the baton, the, the diameter of it. I was thought this was going to be smaller. And of course, there's the problem of these super bright LEDs. This is like a 600 lumen flashlight. Does produce a lot of heat. And this entire bell housing that I don't want to use is the heat sink. So what I might need to do is get another flashlight. I checked the size of the LED again versus the size of the one inch PVC pipe. Now I could grind the board down to fit, maybe, but it's still gonna get too hot. And it occurred to me that there's one thing I hadn't checked yet and that was the voltage of the broken wires. I don't know why I didn't think about doing this before. You see the flashlight holds six AA batteries and each one is one and a half volts. So the output of all the batteries is nine volts. But what about the output wires? Dude, that's only five volt. I mean, it's not even five volt. I don't have to use this LED. I don't have to use the hot LED. I have plenty of LED strips that all run off of five volt and generate no heat. Yeah. Are the LEDs gonna be bright enough to make the end of the time stick glow? Basically, yes it is. And right now, I only have a couple of the LEDs under each piece, so I think this is gonna work. And it'll run all day. Okay, I've got my lighting worked out, and I think the print's almost done for the parts, so let's make sure everything fits together. All right, so the gray ones were my first try. These are the ones that, they pretty much worked, but they're a tiny bit off. So now I've got the black set. Uh, this is just the, the whole second attempt. Actually, all of these are completely remodeled. Uh, they didn't necessarily need to be. I could have just increased their size a little bit in the slicer, but I went ahead and made sure that I was getting sizes that I knew that I was getting for repeatability, right? So most of these are 
maybe half a millimeter, maybe three quarters of a millimeter bigger to try and accommodate real world things that they actually fit. Yeah, and that's, oh, look at that, all the way. That's what I wanted. Oh, that's actually a much better fit than I ever expected it to be. Okay, so then this piece still fits inside. And then the rods still fit on top. Sweet. Now everything fits together except one ring. Okay. So this ring doesn't quite fit over this ring. Which way do I want to adjust this? Which is funny because that was the one part that did work here. <laughs> that was the one part that did work there. All right. Um, I can print a new one, but I can also just grind away at some of the material and make it fit. I check the fit as I go, and I do my best to not force the fit to happen. I forced it. Well, I'm bummed I broke it. I'm not surprised I broke it. I'm bummed that I broke it, though. <sighs> yeah, I was covered in spit. All right. But all the pieces do fit together now, and the broken bit can still be glued in place. But how does all of this look with a flashlight? Yeah, that looks fine. Now, the, the pipe is lighting up. I'll have to paint the PVC pipe, of course, but um, cool. All right. So the, one of the pieces that I designed was the connector that'll connect the flashlight to the piece of PVC. So this should fit. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> oh my, uh... that O-ring's great. Not that I need the O-ring, but. Yeah, that's it, it bottomed, out, bottomed out where I wanted it, okay. And the wires. Yeah. It's kind of a tight fit, but that fits, okay. I think I've got all my pieces, so what I need to do is figure out how long of a piece of PVC I need and see if acetone will take the markings off the flashlight. I can always repaint it. I'm gonna sand this a little bit. This is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, it's one of those points where we're like, I'm almost done. Well, no, actually I got all the assembly to do still, but I think I've got all the parts made. That's really kind of cool. Ah, sanding. Well, it still goes really quick with the resin prints. I look at the length of the batons on screen and it looks like it's about 13 inches or 33 centimeters. And that should be about right. So I cut a length of PVC and check the look of it. It's one of those things that, once again, like I always do, it looks too small. It doesn't look like the white portion's long enough. Like it needs to be a little bit longer, but no, I hold it up against the reference image I have and I just kind of look at how long it is versus how they use it in the show and the fact that it needs to hang on someone's belt. And no, that's, that's about right. All right. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to primer the PVC but I'm not gonna use spray primer. Because it is PVC, that middle magic word, vinyl, that, that V in the uh, PVC, I'm gonna actually spray this with the automotive vinyl spray paint. Get a can of that and tell you about it in a second. So the brand doesn't matter. This happens to be Duplicolor, but it's not, this isn't a brand specific thing. Go to an auto body store and you can get spray paint specifically made to, to spray paint the vinyl seats of older cars. I don't know if they actually make vinyl seats in cars anymore. But um, people used to want to paint the inside. So this is what you would use to spray the, respray re your dashboard or, or the vinyl seats or parts of your bumper. This will adhere to vinyls and dry. So I'm gonna use this as my primer on the PVC, the poly polyvinyl chloride, uh, whatever it is, I'm probably saying that wrong. 
Um, but vinyl is the V in PVC. So I'm gonna use this as my primer, and then I can use regular paints on top of it and everything's gonna dry just fine. Most spray paints dry on PVC, it's pretty good anyway. But this is one of those projects that you know it would bite me in the rear and it wouldn't dry the way I want it to, so I'm gonna go the extreme route. So in addition to spray painting the PVC pipe black as a, uh, as a base coat, I also went ahead and painted over the logos on the flashlight since they weren't gonna come off with, uh, with acetone. Now what I did was I applied tape and only put spray paint in certain areas. So why did I bother doing that? That way I didn't clog the grip up with, uh, with paint. That's still just the clean anodized metal. And um, in case the paint had any kind of different look from the anodized metal, I made sure to tape it off in places that were already panel lines or already had a, a point of separation. Look, it's black and I, it was black and I painted it black and it's still black. <sighs> All right. I'm gonna start gluing pieces together. <laughs> The paint adds a little to the diameter of the pipe, but it still fits. A little bit of thin CA glue inside to glue the pieces together. I can also stick on the adapter that'll hold on the glow end. So nice. Should've just done that to begin with. There we are. Yeah, that comes off. Yeah, maybe even just a little bit more. There we go. Before I glue the flashlight in place, I removed the broken wires and soldered in some longer wire. Now these are just strands from a Cat5 network cable because Cat5 has eight of these little wires inside of it. And check the connections, we're good. And make it long enough to fish through the PVC and super glue the cap to the glow end base. Okay, all right. Honestly, this part was kind of a mistake. I should have pre-painted all the parts while they were still separate, but I didn't. Now I have a lot of taping and covering of the parts that I don't want to be sprayed with dark silver spray paint. A little while later, and all of the 3D printed parts have been painted dark silver. I did let the paint get a good amount of time to set up because I'm immediately going to cover it up with tape again. And that way I can spray the PVC pipe brown. So what I did was I sprayed the black down almost uniformly with a warm brown color. And then while it was still wet, I came along with a darker, like, espresso color. Espresso bean, I think it was called. And I did kind of a splotchy back and forth with that that wasn't really perfect. Then it went over once again with the same light warm brown color, very lightly at a, at a, at a greater distance, just to get kind of a speckled, mottled, not perfect, yet uniformly not perfect brown color. Anyway. Kind of what I wanted because it's supposed to be sort of wood-ish. At least it's got it has a wood finish to the look on the prop, as well as they make the sounds of sticks when they hit the ground. I removed the tape very quickly after painting because I don't want the tape sticking to anything and causing problems with the paint. It's gonna take a little bit for this brown paint to really set up and dry. I use a different brand, it takes a lot longer to set up. So I'm just gonna let this be for a while, and then I'm gonna weather it with shoe polish and we can glue the thing back on the end. The next day, I used black shoe polish to help weather the dark silver and the upper part of the grip. I just put on a ton of shoe polish with a paintbrush and then wiped it off the higher areas. It'll dry a lighter color than it looks right now, but I do like the way it looks. I also brushed and smeared black shoe polish all over the brown paint. I tried brown shoe polish at first, but it was nearly impossible to see because my spray paint, it was pretty much exactly the same shade of brown. And I decided to cover the glow end as well. I thought that if the shoe polish ran into the cracks between the layers, it might look good. And you know, it did, but the shoe polish almost made the glowing part too dark. I ended up wiping most of it off with lacquer thinner. Okay, so my plan was to use these lights. They've got the right voltage, they'll work with the flashlight that I've installed in the base. But as I look at them, they're not, I mean, they work, 
they'll do the job that makes them makes it glow but I wasn't convinced this was the right way to go obviously the 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 super bright that was fantastic but it's just gonna cook it so I don't want to use something that hot I found something different something that I hadn't really seen before uh, in, in LED lights and that is a continuous strip they're so tiny that each segment has five little LEDs on it fused directly to the flexible strip. Well, let's plug one in. The end result is way better. And these are also a warm white, which is a much better choice for this particular project as opposed to the cool white. And this seems to do a whole lot better for what I want. And what I was looking at was, I'm very careful, now don't overly stress it. And now it's starting to get bright enough on the two sides. So if I was to cut this up, because you can, at every one of these little black lines, that's a point where I can cut the strip. So I can cut it down to just that little 12 millimeter, 13 millimeter wide section and light up just that little section if I want to. Now my plan is to take a small rod of clear plastic and stick sections of LED strip to it and then resolder the connections with Cat5 wire. I'm gonna need to make little jumper connections to get all the parts connected. I just use a small amount of wire and about 14 sections of LED strip. Yeah, that's great. That side too, yep, everything. Awesome sauce. And it all fits inside the half inch hole that I put into the glow rod end piece. This small amount of LEDs will probably run all day on those six batteries. Remove the testing wire and connect my custom LED bulb to the end of my time baton. Now wrap some tape for the, for the sake of blocking the light. Uh, basically, if there's anything, I don't want anything to leak out, light to leak you know, because light leaks, right? Because it's a fluid. Um, I don't want any light to leak out in areas that I don't want to illuminate and glow. So let me just do that around the bottom. I can slip the glow rods over the LEDs and put the cage over the glow rods. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, all right, all right. Okay, what I need to do is actually, how well does this one work? Well, that one works really well. Okay, so I'll use that one. A few drops of super glue at the corners will hold the glow rods in place. And the cage will glue right to the cage base over the glow rods. I did my best to keep the four strips of the LEDs facing the openings of the cage, but it glows so well that it's really kind of hard to tell if I got it exactly right or not. The last thing I'm gonna do is add the tiniest amount of bright silver dry brushing just a touch to show off panel lines and to catch the tops of the rings. All the materials I used in this video, I ordered online. I put a list in the description. Okay, I understand that this isn't the single most exciting MCU device ever. It, it really isn't, it's, it's a baton. But um, I like time travel stories and I like time travel devices. And I think that this thing is really kind of neat. And I love the fact that in the show, it's been kind of reduced to kit that a security guard wears, right? I mean, uh, the Minutemen are a little more than security guards, but you know, it's a joke. Also, I'm really happy because this is the first time I think that I've made a 3D printed prop completely from scratch. This is the first time where I actually went in and made the models by hand in order to do the 3D printing. I don't think I've done that before, certainly not on the channel, but I don't think I've done that before specifically at all. And um, all right, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, 
Now that I've got a hold of it and I can actually see it in three dimensions, uh, I could totally make this out of foam. Absolutely, it's just rings of foam around a foam around a, a flashlight with a PVC pipe. There's more foam around here and something else I could put in to, to make it glow or just make a 3D printed part to, to make the glow so it's right. You know, totally doable. But um, I had fun 3D printing one. Um, is there a drawback to it? Yeah, they're kind of fragile. Um, Unlike a, a foam prop, if, if this happens to get dropped, the end's probably gonna shatter. But, um, you know, trade-offs. So, I still have one, and I'm really happy with it. Now, if you wanna make a time baton for yourself, well, you can. I'm gonna share my STL files and OBJ files. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load them up on my Patreon. So if you're a member of my Patreon site, you can download those for free. And if you're not and you don't want to be, that's okay. I'm also gonna take the same files and put them on my Etsy store. I'm gonna maintain that my patterns that you use for cutting up foam are gonna remain free. But uh, this particular time, I'm gonna, particular time, I'm gonna do a bit of an experiment and put these up in a different place and see if that works out. Um, and I appreciate it if you get a hold of those because honestly, that's supporting my channel. And I really do appreciate all the support that I do get from the channel. So if you do want to make one of your own, whether you make it out of foam or you 3D print one or you find some other interesting way to do it, please share a picture with me. I would love to see how you make a, a time baton or any of the TVA gear because I know there's going to be lots of different ways you can make a time manipulation device from the TVA. But this is how Odin makes. I had one other piece that I had designed. This is the first time I've actually pulled it off and got the, got the, <clears throat> let's not say pulled it off. So like a lot of flashlights, this one also has a strobe mode. You know, a lot of flashlights just kind of blink, but this one's, you hold the button and it's like crazy fast. I don't, is that, does that meet health and safety standards? This seems like it's way too fast of a strobe. <laughs> hold still variant. <laughs> I want to thank David Theobald III, Mickey Rat, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.